Hi, and welcome back to WebQuests Part 2. We will begin this video with an introduction into the elements of the WebQuest as a review. We are going to be talking about the introduction, task, process, evaluation, and conclusion. So why don't we break these down into smaller parts and help you learn what you need to do in this process. So I'm going to begin by letting you know that we will be working in Google Sites. So you will begin the process by going to your Gmail account and going into More, then Even More, and going down on the right-hand column, you'll see here that we have a link for Sites. So go ahead and click on Sites and you will see the original Classroom website that you created. We are going to create a second website. This one will be called, whatever your title is, WebQuest. So let's say that I want to do the Salem Witch Trials WebQuest. That's what I would name it. I would create a blank template website and then go from there. Now this website will include those pages that I've just listed. So we will have five pages on this web quest. So it'll be really is easy to set up and then you will just fill it up with the elements. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take you through the process that I use to create our web quests. So the first place that I want you to begin is with the task. So simply stated, what does this mean? This is what you want your students to be able to do. Make sure that this is a doable and interesting task. In other words, make sure that they're having fun while they learn. You will need to make sure that this is a higher order thinking skill. If you need a reminder, just rewind the video and watch the captivating presentation on hot skills. The easiest place to get some ideas is from your standards and objectives. Okay, quick scaffolding alert. Remember that we did our backwards design? This is the time that we are going to dust off those ideas and choose an aspect of that lesson to teach with a web quest. This is the most consuming part, not because it is tough, but because there are tons of ideas to choose from. If you need some help making sure that your idea is worthy, then just send me an email. I will be online all week, same as last week, waiting here just to talk to you to help you through the process. Think of it as your little own holographic doc. Next, let's go ahead and move to the process. The best way to get an idea about the process is to go and see some examples. I have listed on this video a URL of an example. I think that this, these people, this team, did a great job in scaffolding their learners into the home stretch. On my website that I have included here is the link for the repository for the web quests. You can go and take a look at all of the examples. The ones with names next to them are ones created using Google Sites. The ones without names are created using PowerPoint. Now, at this point in the game, we are using Google Sites, so if you need a better example, I would use the ones with the names next to them. The PowerPoint used to be our method before I hit the university and told them that a web quest needed to be on the web. Imagine that. The process is how you want to get them from their empty brains to their expert brains. We are creating an informational bridge, if you will. This entire process should be web-based. Occasionally we will include journals or worksheets, but the majority should be web-based. I usually tell people that 15 to 20 websites is a good number, but that number depends on your site. I have seen great web quests that use 10 great websites. You need to gauge whether your students have learned all they need to in order to be successful with their hot skills. Now we continue on to our introduction. I like to do this next in order to give myself some extra energy and creativity. This is where you will create a hook for your learners. What big picture are you going to give them? Will they hold a presidential debate? Will they create a museum exhibit? Will they hold auditions for a dance competition or perform in one via video upload? Will they create their own digital story, webquest, or vidcast? The ideas are endless. I like to give you the following example. 
You were a judge in Salem, Massachusetts during the Salem events. As the judge, it is your duty to learn about the events, question the data, and draw informed, educated conclusions. You are preparing for the opening remarks and need to decide how to set up your proceedings. Learn everything you need to learn in order to make a just and fair decision. The introduction is short and sweet. Just think of something fun that your students would love to do and create an interesting scenario to get them excited. I usually proceed now to the evaluation. Now remember that some of you created your Google Form to be your evaluation. Others of you created just play versions to practice with. This is the time to make the Google Form into your assessment. You will create either a pre or post test, quiz, or survey to see if your students reached the hot skills that you desired to have them reach. You may need to finesse your form just a bit to be better in line with your web quest. Remember that this project will be ongoing all semester long. We have time to improve lots of the um, elements found in these projects. Just remember to have fun. Your Google Form should be embedded on your WebQuest evaluation page. If you don't remember how to make this happen, then just watch the videos from last week. Easy peasy. Next, I would create a Standards and Objectives page. On this page, you will include the Common Core Standards, Grade Level, the State, which is Utah, and many other notes to teachers who would like to use your site in the future. This is your sales pitch. This is a simple page that just requires some copying, pasting, and formatting. Don't make it complicated. Finally, you will include your conclusion page. This is the congrats you are done page. You will say something connected with the introduction page. So using our example, you could say, well, the Salem witch trials are now over. How do you feel you did as the judge that decided the fate of 12 young women? This process was difficult and required a great deal of wisdom. Congratulations on the successful completion of your decision. I look forward to working with you on more trials in the future as you are a fair, informed, and just judge. So this is what our web quest is going to be. This is the process. If you have any questions, I reiterate that you should contact me. I will be online all week long. Um, during work hours and we'll be able to help you through the process. So if you have any questions at all, need any clarification, just want to talk so that I'm not bored, please give me a call and you are welcome to look at the resources on the website to find more information if that's how you would rather roll. I hope you enjoy this web quest. Thank you for being patient during my illness. This has given me a great opportunity to try my hand at some blended learning, which I believe I'm going to make a regular part of the semester. So another part, little tiny piece of your homework is to think about how you felt during the whole flipped uh, classroom idea and how what kind of things would have made the experience better and how you felt about the whole thing. And we will debrief when I come back next week. My doctors assure me that I will be ready to go as of Monday. So I look forward to talking to each and every one of you. Enjoy the journey and have a wonderful day.